Oh, hey. Hey there, it's me, Tommy Tool. How to get more out of your breakup than just heartache. Here we are. We're on module three, physical fitness, and we're talking about oh, sleep. Um, here's what you'll discover. The big picture, how to deal with insomnia. Facts about sleep, signs of sleep deprivation, common causes, and things you can do to get a better night's rest. We'll talk about strategies for getting rest and falling back to sleep. Uh, oh my gosh, so I think I'm pretty well qualified to talk about this next subject. Oh my goodness, when I was writing this episode here, I had a massive headache from lack of sleep and lack of caffeine. But that was yesterday. So it's a new day. I got a little bit more rest. But I want to, you know, want you to know why I'm so sleep deprived. Well, for a couple reasons, actually. And I wish I could say I took one for the team and deprived myself of sleep in the name of research and empathy. But sadly, that's not so. I'm just not that sadistic. Truth is, I have three people in this house that all have different bedtimes, and I'm usually woken up at any given hour by any one of the three. So my daughter, she usually comes in after, you know, being out late. She's in college. The other one, it would be my husband who comes to bed at a different bedtime. And then, you know, either the cat or my little guy who comes in and climbs into bed with us. So I'm pretty lucky. I'm one of those people, though, who can sleep anywhere, anytime, and without shame. <laughs> so um, because I have a full-time job, everything I do with my website, my podcast, my blog, or my, my writing has to be done either early in the morning or very late at night. So my sleep suffers for it. And, you know, I remember recently the first good night's sleep I had in over a year. And I know, sad, huh? Um, but I woke up and I felt like I was somebody else a sharper version of me, a happier version of me, and a more productive version of me. And until then, I didn't quite realize the effects of not getting enough sleep. Because I just kind of was going through life feeling groggy and tired all the time. I just had gotten used to it. But after that, I vowed to myself I would do a better job and quit being so Nazi about not getting enough, um, about getting stuff done and getting more sleep. But occasionally... I still need more sleep, like maybe today a little bit. Oh my goodness. It's a little different story though when you wake up and simply can't go back to sleep. And recently I had a spell of this too. So I'm sure you can relate because you lay there tossing and turning as the minutes turn to hours. It's awful. And the worst part is it puts you in a bad mood. And when you don't finally get enough, when you have to get up and face the day and you haven't had any sleep... It's the worst, and for most of us, our day doesn't really end at 5 o'clock. That's just the beginning, and that's when all the really important decisions have to be made, like what's for dinner, how am I going to logistically get one kid here when the other needs to be there, and how are we all going to eat and do homework when we have obligations that last until 8.30, putting us to by, you know, home by 9, how am I going to get dinner made and dishes cleaned when I feel so crappy? Yeah, happy, happy, joy, joy. And we get to do this all over tomorrow, too. And this crazy woman named Tommy Tool is telling me to fit exercise in. Holy flippin' cow! Yeah, that was the module right before this, right? So settle down, cowboy. Exercising when you are tired is not only a bad idea in the middle of the night, because the endorphins will keep you awake longer, but you end up hurting yourself, too. Take it from one who's actually been dumb enough to try it. Yep, I went out running one time in the middle of... Well, it was wee hours of the morning, and I tripped and fell over a pile of leaves that I just didn't see. I was too tired, twisted an ankle, pulled a groin, and limped around for like two weeks. So, if you're having trouble sleeping, exercise on a regular basis will help. It really will, because when you lift weights and, um, you know, it's safer if you do it on a machine <laughs> when you're tired. Um, you, you can't get quite so hurt. But I find that lifting weights by the second day will drain me, and I will usually crash by 8 p.m. by the third night. So try to time it so that by the third night you don't have anywhere to be. And in researching this subject, I found some interesting facts about lack of sleep and the effects it can have on your body. It's believed you can actually die from too little sleep. So we're going to talk about some facts about sleep deprivation that are important for you to know.
Nobody really knows how long you can go without sleep before you die because it's not really an ethical thing to research and test. So, in fact, it's um, a form of torture. It's been used by Chinese communists in, in the Korean War, I'm sure probably long before that, on prisoners of war and by our very own CIA for interrogative techniques. Okay, but just to give you a benchmark, the world record for staying awake is 11 days. So here are some interesting facts I pulled from a Health Essentials article posted in the Cleveland Clinic. So I, um, I have a few more than I have on this slide, and I'll just read them to you. It takes you less than five minutes. If it takes you less than five minutes to fall asleep at night, you're probably sleep deprived. It should ideally only take you about five, or 10 to 15 minutes. And this was a cute little fact I found that sea otters hold hands when they fall asleep so they don't drift away from each other. But we're not sea otters, so, um, when, and, but we are the only mammals that willingly delay sleep. So stress, physical f or mental illness, living or sleeping arrangements, family history, shift work, diet, and exercise habits can all cause insomnia. All right, so getting back to the slide here, being awake for 16 hours straight is like having a blood level, um, alcohol level of 0.05, and you know the legal blood limit is, um, alcohol limit is 0.08, so that's, that's pretty, it tells you how much you're impaired by lack of sleep. Doing without sleep is likely to make you hungry as levels of liptin in um, an appetite regulating hormone fall. Insomnia is often a normal part of grieving in case you didn't know. So taking sleeping pills can disrupt this natural process. So just kind of think about that. Um, signs you might be sleep deprived. Not that anyone needs to tell you this, right? You know when you're sleep deprived. But according to an article written by Psychology Today by Kelly Buckley, a PhD person, um, the signs of sleep deprivation are unpleasant feelings of fatigue, irritability, difficulties concentrating, Problems with reading and speaking clearly. Here, I'm, I'm kind of reading and speaking clearly. <laughs> Poor judgment. I don't know. I, that one's a, that's a challenge sometimes still. Lower blood um, body temperature. I'm always cold, so that doesn't really apply. Um, a considerable increase in appetite. Now, I can tell you that one is probably more true than anything. So, But if you exercise more, that'll counterbalance that. So there you go. So uh, talk about incentive to sleep, right? Just knowing that I could lose weight if I slept more. Bonus! If the deprivation continues, though, the worsening effects include disorientation, visual misperceptions, apathy, severe lethar um, lethargy, and social withdrawal. So you don't need to be a rocket scientist to tell you this. Oh, wait, I'm not a rocket scientist, am I? So anyway, when a person is deprived of sleep, the immune system becomes unable to perform normal bodily, bodily functions. The negative effects become much more intense when people are already sick, injured, or traumatized. So whatever body, bodily damage they have suffered will not heal as fast, okay? So whatever pain they are feeling will get worse. Whatever new bodily damage threatens them will be harder to defend against. So see how important sleep is. I mean, it's, I know I'm preaching to the choir and I know you know this and you're just having a hard time getting back to sleep. So um, in a minute, I'm going to give you some techniques for doing that. But some common causes and it, it just kind of helps to know that um, insomnia only lasts a few days and goes away on its own you know, sometimes, especially when it's tied to an obvious temporary cause, such as stress over a painful breakup. So there's some hope there. But chronic insomnia, however, is usually tied to an underlying psychological or medical issue. So, um, I like this slide. This is so cute. Um, so anxiety and depression are two of the most common causes of chronic insomnia. And, you know, I'm sure emotionally and the, the emotional stress you're under right now, um, it, this too shall pass, you know. So other common emotional and psychological causes include chronic or significant life stress, anger, worry, grief, bi bipolar disorder, and trauma. So not that these are your ailments right now. Hopefully, you know, 90% of you, the, the cause is just this temporary anxiety 
and and depression is you know from the breakup. Um, so effects of the sleep deprivation. Um, I want to show you this slide too because, again, as mentioned earlier, here are some of this, um, and I'm not going to go through them all. But you know, we talked about you know, cognitive impairment, um, memory, memory lapses or losses. And I, I had I was symptom of all that when I was going through this. I couldn't even remember that my carpets were cleaned, and my mom she had had them cleaned for me, and um, I just don't remember the whole process. Nothing about it. Um, so anyway, here are some things that you can kind of read up on. Um, severe yawning, yeah, hallucinations, um, symptoms similar to ADHD, can't kind of focus on anything. I mean, I'm telling you, when I was so depressed, I couldn't even read a paragraph. It took me all day to sometimes get through something at work. It was just ridiculous, but so I feel your pain. I know. Um, it can be, can be it's, it's, it's a pretty amazing thing how stress and depression and sleep, how all that is um, all intertwined. So here's some tips on how to get back to sleep. So the more trouble you have with sleep, the more it starts to invade your thoughts, right? That's kind of like anything. You fixate on it. Worrying floods your body with adrenaline and before you know it, you're wide awake. So I love this next slide because um, I love to challenge self-defeating thoughts. I'm kind of weird that way, I know. But here are some ways we talk to ourselves and some ways we can talk ourselves back into sleep. So it kind of goes like this. These are some of the self-defeating thoughts. Um, maybe the unrealistic expectation is, I should be able to sleep very well every night like a normal person. But the sleep-promoting comeback to that unrealistic ex expectation is, this is what you need to tell yourself, lots of people struggle with sleep from time to time. I will be able to sleep with practice. Exaggeration. It's the same every single night. Another night of sleepless misery. Here's the comeback. Not every night is the same. Some nights I do sleep better than others. So catastrophizing. If I don't get some sleep, I'll tank my presentation and jeopardize my job. The comeback is I can get through my presentation even if I'm tired. I can still rest and relax tonight, even if I can't sleep. Hopelessness. I'm never going to be able to sleep well. It's out of my control. The comeback. Insomnia can be cured. If I stop worrying so much and focus on positive solutions, I can beat it. Fortune telling. It's going to take me at least an hour to get to sleep tonight. I just know it. Okay, here's the comeback. I don't know what will happen tonight. Maybe I'll get to sleep quickly if I use the strategies I've learned. Okay, so here are some strategies. And these are some things you can do that will make you sleepy. Stick to a regular sleep schedule. Support your biological clock by going to bed and getting up at the same time every day, including weekends. Avoid naps. Limit caffeine, alcohol, and nicotine. Avoid late meals and get regular exercise. Okay, so this next slide is um, talking about how you can develop a better bedtime, nighttime routine. So here are a few simple guidelines to help you stay focused on getting more rest into your life. And I love this little infographic because it talks about, you know, here's, here's your bedtime over here where the the bed is and how you can back up you know back into your bedtime so stop drinking caffeine you know six hours before you go to bed and maybe three hours before you um, go to bed stop drinking any kind of alcohol and finish your dinner you know kind of finish your dinner two to three hours before you go to bed and you know my house we sometimes don't even eat till eight thirty, nine o'clock it's ridiculous but um and so, yeah, I go to bed shortly, right after we eat, and that's just, it's a terrible habit. I hate it. So I, I've told my husband, if we can't have dinner ready earlier, then I'm just going to stop and not eat what he's cooking. <laughs> I'm just going to make a salad. You know, I know that if he's going to barbecue by 7, it's going to be like an 8.30, 9 o'clock dinner. So I just kind of go, all right, I'm just going to make a salad or have cereal or something silly because I hate to cook. Um, okay, so anyway, you can look at this slide, you know, turn off electronics an hour before, stop working or studying, and um, do things that 
stop doing the stressful things an hour before. All right, so um, here's the next slide is about having good bedroom hygiene. Have you ever heard of it this way? Yeah, that's the, you know, have the quiet room, make it dark and cool, and um, try using a sound machine or earplugs to hide out hide outside noise. An open window or fan can keep the room cool. And blackout curtains, you can get those anywhere, um, to keep it dark and or a sleep mask to block out light. You know, people are like, I can't sleep, so and so snoring, or I can't sleep, the, you know, it's it's light, it's dark out, I mean, the, the light shines in my face or whatever. And these are some things that you really want to have good hygiene. You know, don't have a TV, don't fall asleep with a TV, that's kind of bad too. Um, so avoid stimulating activity in stressful situations before bedtime. This includes vigorous exercise, as we talked about. Um, big discussions or arguments with the ex. So, you know, maybe unplug your phone an hour before you go to bed. Or catching up on work. Um, instead, focus on quiet, soothing activities such as reading or listening to soft music while keeping lights low. All right. And the last one is turn off screens an hour before bedtime. So that's, you know, as I mentioned, your TV, tablet, smartphones, computers, all those lights um, suppresses your body's production of melatonin and can severely disrupt your sleep. So mel melatonin is what helps us sleep. Instead of emailing, texting, watching TV, or playing video games, try listening to a book on tape, a podcast, or reading by a soft light. It's not hopeless, you know, and like everything else you are going through, this too shall pass. So um, at the end of um, this video, there's some material. I've, um, I've attached some material that will help you on those nights you just can't sleep. So I recommend printing them out and keeping them in your nightstand to have handy and um, just to clue you in what I'm talking about, I've attached a real life, um, genuine, bona fide, real McCoy piece of legislation on the tax code. <laughs> I know, I'm kind of mean, but in the circles that I run with, we call it sleeper material. I work for a tax agency, and I'll tell you, trying to get some of this stuff after lunch, it is a for sure, you know, it is, you'll go to, you'll be sleeping like a baby in no time after you read a couple paragraphs of this stuff. But wait, that's not all because I've included two pieces of legislation. So just so you know, don't um, don't print them all out because they are pretty lengthy. You, don't, you may only want to print the first few pages of each legislation that I've given you because like I said, by the second paragraph, you should, it should do the trick and you should be sound asleep. But I've also included, um, so that was just kind of, that's kind of humor, but I'm, I'm really sort of serious about that too, because you read something so boring like that and you will fall asleep. So I've also included um, a good, um, I've got a document in there. <clears throat> it's my tip sheet on getting back to sleep with techniques to help you get back to sleep too. So um, check that out. And in that document, there is a link to a YouTube video of people doing nothing but yawning. <laughs> so if you really do get tired, I know I said don't look at any screens, but it will make you sleepy just watching people. Um, the simple fact that watching others yawn will make you yawn and promote sleep. And if you don't, you're either you have autism or you have lack of empathy because um, scientifically they've proven that people who don't yawn by watching other people yawn are afflicted with maybe one of those two things. I don't know. I'm not making that up. That's what I read. So check it out. And lastly, I've included a bedtime routine checklist. So, um, check that out and uh, remember follow a bedtime routine practice good bedroom hygiene and be sure to get the bonus material at the end of this lesson All right. thanks for joining me I think I'll go maybe I'll just go take a nap that'd be good okay see you in my next video